Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a pretty exciting one if you are a fan of cricket. So it's a fairly recent R package on CRAN that lets you download data from ESPN Crick Info. So you are able to get all sorts of international statistics about the games, uh, test matches, one days, T20s uh, for both men and women, and get them nice and easily into our studio. So I'm going to have a look at the different functions in this package and have a little bit of a play with the data. I uh, hope you enjoy and find it helpful. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. It helps support the channel. So this is the package that we're going to be looking at. It's called Cricket Data uh, by Rob Heinemann and a number of other people. And it's pretty straightforward. It's only got uh, four different functions in it, and we will have a look at each of them. So let's jump over to our studio. Okay, so if you haven't already installed the Cricket Data package, uh, come to Packages, hit Install, type in Cricket Data, download it. Uh, we'll then load up Cricket Data, and we'll also load up Tidyverse because we'll do a little bit of graphing a little bit later on. So the first function we're going to look at is Fetch Crick Info, and that will grab 10 data from international matches. I've got a couple of examples here. We give it a format, men or women, batting, bowling or fielding, and a country. And if we run that... Uh, it takes a few seconds, so it's not immediate. You can see that there was a little bit of a little bit of time there for it to jump over and grab that information from Crick Info, but we can see that it has pulled down all of that information. So let's open that up in a viewer, have a look, and so we can see that we've got our players when they started playing, innings, not outs, runs. So basically, it's grabbing all of the Australian women's T20 players ever, which is only 57. I guess it hasn't really been running all that long. Balls faced, strike rate, hundreds, fifties, ducks, fours. So just with this alone, there's probably probably a uh, quite a few different things you could do. If we have a look at the Indian one-day bowling, run that one. Uh, again, we'll see a little bit of a lag, probably slightly more. It's going to be a bigger data set. And so we can see 243 observations. Bowling, slightly fewer variables. We can jump in. We've got wickets, runs, balls, average economy. Best bowling, strike rate, fourfers, fifers. All of the players. So again... We, uh, we might want to be doing comparisons. It may be that we need to run a couple of these, maybe pull information, say, from different countries. If we wanted to compare countries or perhaps uh, if we wanted to compare, say, one-day performances to test performances, we might pull both of those, match up the player names. So that was our first function. Uh, we'll get rid of those ones. So that was Fetch Crick Info. Uh, next one, fetch crick sheet. So this fetches ball by ball or match or player data information. So this is going to be much, much bigger. And so we will take a look. If we start with the ball by ball, and we will run this. And for each of these, you notice we are getting the woman's BBL. For some matches, uh, this is potentially going to get pretty pretty big and ridiculous so we can see 73,000 observations and when we open it up we will see why so this is ball by ball so each each line is a ball from a match so we've got a match id and we can see the date the venue who was playing against who so we've got sydney sixes versus the sydney thunder ball one ball two ball three and so on striker non-striker what happened, four runs off the bat, quite a few NAs uh, because there's going to be things that are only happening some of the time. So if we wanted to analyse particular matches or compare matches or look at seasons, then we've got that one. And so if we just do a quick uh, look at the help file, so we can see that we can fetch ball by ball, match, player, female and male, and then we've got uh, different formats. So Things like tests, one day internationals, but then also lots of the different major international competitions as well. So Sheffield Shield, Super Smash, 
county cricket and so on. So I, with all of this code, I am going to link it up on my website so you'll be able to copy and paste it. Let's have a look. If we go from ball by ball, instead we go for match. And again, it's going to take a little while. Okay, so here's our match info. So we've got our teams, gender, season, venue. So now it's telling us about the matches. So rather than ball by ball, and so therefore much, much smaller. I haven't tried running this for something like tests where I would imagine ball by ball is just ridiculously large. So it may be that the ball by ball really is only for these smaller uh, smaller competitions. Uh, and so we will jump back over. We'll run our last one, which is by player. And again, a bit of processing going on. And have a look. Uh, interesting that it is giving us match ID. I think it's trying to pull that off a, uh, a local temp file that it's pulled down. So it may be that you need to go and recode those. I'm not sure. In fact, I may may actually message the authors and see whether whether that was the intended. Um, it looks like maybe that is a minor bug. So uh, I guess wait wait and see. If we drag it out, we can see that on the end of that chain is is what we wanted the match ID but it does seem to be also giving us that path name. But here, by player, is uh, just the teams and the players, so not, not probably not quite as useful. Moving on, uh, if we wanted to look at performance of particular players, uh, in Crick Info, they have them by name, but they also have an ID number. We can use client player ID. Here we can see uh, we're searching for Perry. We're interested in seeing Elise Perry's record, but if we do a search of all the Perry's, here are all the Perry's. And it may be that we do this and then we just grab the ID of interest. If we wanted to try and be a bit fancier, we can see here uh, using fetch player data, we can refer to Perry number two because Elise Perry is the second one on the list. That brings us down to our final function fetch player data and since we've got at least Perry there we can do a search alternatively what we can do is we can type in the number so there is that same number except we are looking t20 and we're looking at batting bring down at least Perry's record and we get the date so it's match by match so we get the date uh, the innings the opposition the ground the performance we didn't specify batting but if we have a look at the help uh, we will see so if we go for help on fetch player data we can see it will only pick the one so we need to specify test one day or t20 batting bowling or fielding if we don't uh, like what happened just there with that one we said test we didn't specify what it was uh, then it will give us the batting so we could go and we could add uh, activity equals bowling in there or in fact even just bowling and we can see that it is now the bowling information instead Okay, so I did a couple more things. My home country is New Zealand. I downloaded the New Zealand uh, fielding information from test matches. Then did a GG plot uh, where I color coded whether someone was a wicketkeeper or not. Let's have a look at this. Hopefully not too small there. So we can see that the, uh, the blues are the wicketkeepers and unsurprisingly... Wicket keepers tend to take a lot more catches than your regular field players. We can see that they, pretty much for any given number of matches, we can see they tend to be higher. Uh, we've got the players that have played uh, the very 
highest number of matches and taken a lot of dismissals. Uh, and so if we knew a little bit about the history of uh, New Zealand cricket, there's probably it's probably a McCallum and a Watling and a probably maybe a Smith. He might actually be he might be that one instead. Up the top he- top end here, certainly one of these two. I think it's going to be Ross Taylor who recently retired. He took a ton of catches in the slips, but just an example of something we could do and uh, get a visualization be able to look at this data one more that i'm going to do and this one i think would be interesting i think different people would approach how to do this differently so i wanted to follow sir richard hadley uh probably new zealand's greatest certainly greatest bowler if not greatest player and so we start off to find his number he had a uh, number of family members who also played through the years, particularly uh, Dale. So we've got Sir Richard Hadley there. We can get his test bowling. And I want to see over time how he accumulated his wickets. He was the first player to get 400 wickets. And so I wanted to do a graph of that over time. We've got the data. I uh, would we'll call it to Sir Richard. A start date gives us the uh, date for each test match. And then what I've done here. We were taking the cumulative sum, but we had to do two adjustments to this. So I wanted the cumulative sum, so counter adding up the wickets over time. And so I needed to make two adjustments. One was I had to deal with the NAs. In some matches, there is a record for the match, but Sir Richard did not bowl. So he didn't get zero wickets. It was an NA. I've used Coalesce to replace uh, those NAs with zeros. The, there's a whole lot of different approaches. We could have had if statements. We could have, there's a whole lot of ways we could do that. The second little fix I needed to do was that if we go and we have a look at the information over here, wickets is being recorded as character, not as numbers. So if we hadn't checked on that, we might kind of go, what on earth's going on? Why is it not adding things up? And the reason was that the these were not getting recorded as numbers. So as.numeric is just taking all these numbers and turning them into numbers. And it's a little bit curious. We noticed that runs got recorded as numeric, but wickets did not. And I'm not 100% sure why. As.numeric, we'll deal with the NAs, cumulative sum. Uh, we're going to have a line graph. We need to set the limits. Otherwise, because it's cumulative sum, the way that it plots out, it sets the, the y-axis based on kind of the initial figures rather than looking at where it wants to get to. So we want 450. So Richard, I think, got into the 420s. So nice round number. Give it a title. Let's have a look at our graph. And there we go. Um, we can see here, if we track across the 400, Crossing that 400 was a uh, was a really big deal at the time. It's been quite a few bowlers have done it since, but big deal back in uh, 1990 when I was uh, much younger, but still loved my cricket. And we can track it over time, so we can see there's been periods. Um, some of these flat periods, obviously, is just when there was gaps between games. Back particularly. Particularly earlier on, uh, there were fewer tours and longer breaks between matches. Uh, I think maybe down here there was a period where Sir Richard started playing, wasn't wasn't guaranteed a spot in the side to start with, uh, and then eventually started taking wickets. We can see it heading up. So there's probably nicer visualizations we can do than what we have here, but it was just something that came to mind as uh, another way to just work with data give an example of a visualization. So we'll take that away. So this is uh, the cricket data package. If you like cricket and you like stats, this is gonna be really helpful. There is another package on, on CRAN that, that deals with cricket and uses the Crick info data. The way that it works is maybe just, I don't wanna say clumsier, but just a little bit different. So with that one, what they have done is they have set it up that you download CSV files, and so you will run a function, a get data function, it will download a CSV file onto your computer, and then there's subsequent functions, and there's quite a lot of them, so it's, it's someone that was really pretty enthused about their cricket that made it, but they have got all of these other functions, but all of the other functions rely on having the CSV files locally on your computer, whereas this is working off temp files, so it is still pulling files in a similar way, but 
just kind of hiding it in the background a little bit more, which just makes it a little bit, a little bit cleaner. We only need to worry about these four different functions rather than a whole plethora of functions. Uh, and then anything else we want to do to work with the data, we can just kind of go from first principles. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Certainly you probably needed to be a little bit of a cricket fan to have hung around to the end, but this is, this is a really nice package. I hope you get some use from it.